Hello and welcome to CEB 811 assignment presentation. My name is Giftson Beniboy. I am a civil engineering student of Fiji National University. A group consists of five members and today we are so thankful and privileged to present what we have discussed in our research, which is based on the topic analysis and RC design of building structure. However, we will be more focusing on the analysis and overall design procedure of Belike Report building structure, which is in India. And on my part, I will be focusing on the introduction, the design objectives, and the design parameter. Thank you. Let's dive into it. Now let's look at the introduction. First, at a brief background. A question might be asked, what is a building structure? To answer it in simple terms, it is a coastal engineering structure that is made for bathing and the mooring of vessels, for loading and unloading of cargoes, for embarking and disembarking of passengers, and for conveyance purposes to ensure transportation of goods and people from one place to another. For the proposed site, the building structure is proposed for Belike Report, as you can see it in Finger 1, in Karnataka State at Pingin Bay in India. It has the coordinates of 14 degrees 42 minutes northing, 74 degrees and 15 minutes easting. Lastly, the bed is designed to cater for the vessel with a capacity up to 120,000 dead weight. And it has the bed length of 300 meters, which is divided into two units. And each unit has 100 meters per unit length with an expansion joint of 50 millimeters. Now, this project is a capital demanding project. It is for handling of bulk of cargoes like thermal coal, soaking coal, iron, and etc. By standard practice, the overall design procedure adopted or uses the Indian standard for 651-1983. And structurally, the model is geometrically generated by using the Start Pro software. Now let's look at the objectives. We only have two objectives. First is to analyze the design parameters of the bedding structure and discuss its overall design procedure. Two is to discuss the application of the design procedure. However, before any actual design of bedding or JD structure begin, one must consider the following factors which we call the design parameters. First, the site location. Factors like easy access for ships, meteorological and the wave and dynamic condition must be carefully assessed. Second is the types of bed. This is very important and there are two types. One is what we call wolf, which is parallel to the shoreline. And uh, number two is the pier, which is perpendicular to the shoreline as you can see it in Fig 2. Then looking at the selection of type of bed structure, the type and the material to be used will depend on factors like the material availability, the construction cost, the method of construction, and the dimensions and mass of ships handed on the port. The other parameters may also include the required number of beds, longitudinal dimensions, the required number of area, as well as the draft along the bed, as you can see it in finger tree, which represents the draft consisting of freeboard, beam, and also consideration of the depth. I shall give time to my next colleague to continue with the discussion. Thank you. Greetings, everyone. My name is Harrison Triff, and today I will be presenting on the general methodology adopted. First of all, we have the design methodology, then the collection of data, which has been split into two parts, the collection of secondary data and the collection of primary data. Then we move on to the selecting the type of requirement of birth, moving on to the calculation of all forces acting on the structure, analyzing the structure and designing the structure. We are presenting on the overall design procedure adopted. First, we have the overall design procedure, then moving on to the studying of the project, where the calculation of the dead load, the live load, the mooring load, 
belting current load and the wind load will take place. Then the analyzing, then analyzing the frame and calculating the bending, and designing the slab, designing the beams, piles as per the standard codes. Then the detailing for reinforcements, then the closing of the project. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Richard Chafet and uh, I will be presenting uh, this slide. Working stress design. Well, according to Kikwot and uh, Patnik 2019, they talk about uh, asset densities in load, material, and uh, theoretical models, which uh, they exist, exist in uh, structural design. And there are two methods for addressing these uh, asset entities. One is uh, working stress design, and the second one is uh, limit state design. The working stress design method is one way to, to handle uh, uncertainties. It can be expressed as a uh, normal stress capacity less than a uh, safety factor divided by the design stress. And also it has uh, disadvantages, not consistently uh, reliable. The second method, which are uh, one way to add the uh, ascendities, which is a uh, limit state design. Limit state design takes a structure performance against uh, specific condition at different load levels. It focus or focuses on two limiting conditions. One, ultimate limit state, and the second one is uh, service, serviceability limit state. Ultimate limit states relate to safety like uh, load capacity, stability, and avoiding uh, fractures. And the second one is serviceability limit states, which are uh, assess how the structure behaves in everyday use, such as excessive deflection. Moving to the analysis of the induced load on the building structure, I, Stephen David, will be discussing that part. Now moving to the analysis of the pitting structure, which is a vital element when designing, is to understand the different forces that act on the structure. In use of that, engineers will come up with a structural element sizes that can withstand those forces. Uh, so the first load that we, we have to consider is the dead load. So the dead load are loads that will remain throughout our lifespan of the structure itself. So in our case, uh, the loads are uh, the dead loads are, we have the slab weight, so according to the slab size, the uh, uniform load of 7.56 kN per meter square, uh, the transverse beam of 50 kN per meter, a longitudinal beam of 16.5 kN per meter, uh, a pile uh, uniform load of 56.75 kN per meter. So those are the dead loads that we have to consider in the design. Another thing is the, the life load. The life load are moving loads. So it is based on the function of the bedding structure. Is it used for cargo or containers or for fishing or for boats? Uh, in our case, the bedding structure is used for track loading. So because of that, according to the Indian standard, they have adopted 15 kN per meter squared as a life load that will act throughout the uh, bedding structure itself. The load to consider in the analysis is the bedding load. The bedding load is when a vessel or a ship comes close to the bedding structure. Uh, the vessel produces a kinetic energy wave that go against the bedding structure. Because of that, they have included in, this, in the standard that we will use the equation E as shown, where WD is equal to the displacement tonnage of the vessel. Uh, of a value of 120,000 DWT, the velocity no more to the bedding structure of 0.1 meters per second, uh, according to the Indian standard, uh, gravitation, gravitational acceleration of 9.81, we have the mass coefficient of 1.39 meters per second, uh, CE of um, uh, eccentric coefficient of 0.1 meters per second, uh, soft and soft coefficient of 0.96 and 
and when you use substitute those elements into the equation we have the energy of 35 kilonewton per meter acting on the building structure uh, and in order to get the ultimate energy they have multiplied the 1.4 factor to get 49 kilonewton per meter another important load that has to be considered in the design is the mooring load the mooring load is when we have the bedding structure and the ship where the ship is connected to the bedding structure by connecting to the bollards on the bedding structure so the wind will try to pull the vessel away from the bedding structure so the bollards have to be able to resist that force so the equation given by the Indian standard is where the force due to mooring is F is equals to CW A W times P, where the CW the shape factor ranges from 1.3 to 1.6. We have uh, the A W is the wind edge area, and P is the wind edge pressure. So, engineers been used that for the analysis. However, engineers have suggested that pollards have to pull 900 kilonewton. So they have added 900 kilonewton in the design. So. According to the proposed bollard structure, they have uh, spaced it 15 meter apart center to center. So, 735 by 7, we have 128 kilonewton, which is the force that each bollard will have to resist when the wind tries to pull the vessel away from the bedding structure. Another force that has to be considered in the design is the force due to current. The pressure due to current will be applied to the area of the vessel below the water line when fully loaded. So to consider that force due to current we have the equation F is equals to W which is the unit weight of water of 1.025 tons according to the Indian standard and T is the velocity of the current of 0.26 meters per second, the gravity of 9.81 meters per second square. But in terms of the equation we have the force of 0.035 kilometer per meter squared uh, along uh, each pass. So for that they have converted that force to a point load of 75 kilonewton that uh, each pile has to a, a, a pile has to resist and for that to happen they have uh, de decided to use 20 piles. So 75 divided by 20 we have a force of 3.8 kilonewton which each 20 pile has to resist uh, when the current tries to to, to, to hit the structure and that force can be converted to a uniform distributed load of 0.18 km per meter along the, the entire length of each pile. Another force to consider air pressure as shown in figure 8 the force beneath the piles of, from the earth and because of that we have to use the equation according to the Indian standard where PA is equals to K, K is the coefficient of the air pressure, and we have the H is the height of the overall structure, 30 meters uh, for this uh, proposed design, and we have gamma, the unit weight of soil, based on the, on the site, so we have 18 kilonewton per meter cubic, and to find out K, it depends on the angle of, of, of friction, so the angle of friction depends on the soil on the site which equals to 1 minus sine theta over 1 plus sine theta. So we'll have our K, our K value. So for the proposed side, they have used 30 degrees for the angle of friction. And putting all this to the equation, we have the uh, air, air pressure of 17.4 kilonewton per meter squared. So from that, when we convert that to a uniformly distributed load per meter of the bed, we have 6,960 kilonewton per meter. However, we have 20 piles. So when we divide it by 20, we have 384 kilonewton per meter. However, because they have divided that uh, building structure to four levels, that 